Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Prakram, product designer and work in London. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a design portfolio landing page using no code in Figma and using Frema Sites. Frema Sites is a tool that allows you to build websites without using any code and it's a pretty easy website to use and I'm going to walk you through this. You can grab a free design landing page template by heading the link in the description below and subscribe to my newsletter. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe for future design related videos and let's get started. So let's head straight into the web browser and take a look at the website we're looking to build. For com101.com, you can type this in your web browser and have a look for yourself. And we can see I've gone for a bold design language, something fun, something funky, Figma Gumroad inspired here. I only had less than a day to design and really build this. And this just really shows the essence of how fast frame size is. We've got really cool things like scrollable banners that slow down on hover. Very quick, it just takes a few minutes to build on frame size. I can show you this as well. A few little uh, hrefs that scroll down, nice scrollable animations down here as well. And we've got all my links for the things I wanna show people when they land on my website. Do you wanna look at my portfolio, some YouTube videos? Do you want some mentoring? You can book some calls with me for some one-to-one -one design interview coaching, my Figma community and my shop as well. You can see read what others have said, some testimonials, which animates on scroll there as you can see. and. Again, some little testimonial cards, and this is fully responsive as well. We've even got a form for your newsletter so people can subscribe very easily in the footer of my site. So if I can show you, if you go on inspect and you can see this is fully responsive for iPads, for iPhones as well. So let's dive into Figma and frame the sites and build this. So straight into Figma, you can grab this for free by subscribing to my newsletter. Here is a base design of what we're looking to build. And you can really just change the colors to whatever you like. And you can just fill this in with your relevant information. You might want to use this card layout as well. This is for free and you can subscribe to my newsletter to grab this Figma design as well. But let's head now straight into Framer Science. So let's head straight over to Framer. It's a free to use website and tool to sign up with. So just sign up with a link in the description below and we'll head straight into our Framer Science here. And you can see I've already set up the template. And you know what? If you want to save yourself a ton of time, you can purchase this Framer Science template. The Figma design is for free, but if you want the frame the site portfolio template, go in the link in the description below and you can purchase the frame a site template, which means that you'll be able to edit this entire design. You'll be able to edit the template here and you'll be able to duplicate and change this and it's fully working as an end-to-end -end solution. All you have to do is go in the link in the description below and purchase it and you'll get access to the template and it can be yours and you can save yourself hours from learning frame sites and you can edit and change things within seconds so be sure to head and link in the description below and purchase the frame site template if you want to save yourself a ton of time and share this with others if you're loving this design so let's start on frame sites with a blank canvas here and get started in building this figma design so you can just copy things in from straight from figma into frame sites but then when it comes to responsiveness i feel like it's better and easy to really do this step by step to really understand how things work otherwise things might break quite easily so i think first of all let's start with a header here so we've called this john.design on this example so what we can do is just add a text box here by pressing t and then you can just type just like figma your design your design text but what we want to do is make sure that this is inside a frame here. And what this frame is gonna do is make sure that it's fixed as well. So let's just quickly recreate this. So we just say for a con 101, we can see the text is very small here. And what we wanna do is actually select the font. So we're going to use poppins and then let's just make this like 120 so it's like really big and now what we want to do is add this into a frame by right clicking here and then we want to make the frame like 
feel the content. And the reason being is because we want this to be responsive and it goes full of, all the way across here. And then what we do here is actually make this centered inside as well. So this should be like pretty simple. So we can make also the height. We don't want this, we want this to fit the content, which is actually Fitting the content means that it's going to use the same height from the top to bottom, whilst fill is going to be edge to edge, if that makes sense. So what we want to do is we might want to change the color a slight bit here, and then we can make the font here semi-bold. On the right is where you adjust all your fonts. And then maybe you want to add a bit of padding as well. So to do this, you go into the padding section. If you click this bit here, it allows you to just select the top and bottom of the padding. So we always use an eight point grid system, so multiples of eight. And there you go, and that is the top. So the next part we're gonna do is this responsive bit of the about page. Hey everyone, just fast forward in a few weeks and I'm re-filming some of the tutorial and taking a different approach of going through the file instead of a step by step approach I'm gonna really just give an overview of how I went about building the site and really just allowing people to give themselves a freedom of how to do this for themselves and if you want to purchase a template you can do that as well so hopefully this will be quicker and hopefully more beneficial and easier for people um, and we can see this was a file that I started to create and I started to create the grid and I was like, let me just explain how a lot of this works and frame a size. So we can see on the layers panel that to achieve this, we've got a grid and then we have two frames inside and we've called this the image and then this one on the left is just the frame and we've got a button here and what we do in between to create the spaces is I found it easier to add these little spacer components and you can see the height here is fixed for 16 pixels and that just makes it a lot easier to manage responsiveness and when it comes to frame sizes when you press a plus you can add these different breakpoints and like I mentioned, the grid is really useful because on tablet, it makes sense to keep this two column layout. But then on mobile, I just want to have collapse this very easily. And this is what it looks like on mobile. So the next thing I want to talk through is how do we get. So if I go to the website, this is a scrollable banner and it actually slows down on hover. And how do we actually go about achieving this? So let's recreate this scrollable component and on frame of sites we can do this in a couple of clicks like and to do this you just have to grab the ticker component and literally you add your ticker and you connect it to the content that you want to add here for it to actually scroll. So it's really that simple with when it comes to the ticker and inside the right hand panel, you can adjust like the speed of how fast you want the content to display as well as you can adjust the hover speed for it to slow down as well. So that is really how you get the scrollable look. We can see we've got some text inside of ours as well, which I recommend. So you can like add text inside your ticker for it to scroll. And it'll be like oh, this like continuous scrolling and it's really that simple so talking through the main part of the site and how i created this for the portfolio landing page we can see on the home page here we've got the main grid and we've got some spacing throughout and because when you make a responsive site, you always set the height to fit content. And the best way to adjust the spacing when you have fit content is by creating individual rows. And inside the rows, you set the height to basically give the spacing. It's a principle that you can follow with auto layout as well in Figma. And it makes it easy because when I go on mobile, I click that exact same row and I'm like, actually I want this height to be 48. I want to reduce the space in a mobile and it makes it easier. And the next thing is these cards. So 
The recommended way is usually to create a component on frame a size and then duplicate that and change it so you have a centralized way of doing this. But I tried that way and I went for a bit more of a simplistic approach. And the way I've done this is I created a column and these cards are formed like rows. So this is basically like a stack inside and then I've added the padding around this. So we've got the text and the image. This is all inside a row. And then I add the padding around this. And the reason I didn't make this a component is because I found trouble in, if you use a centralized component, I, the cent, it has a centralized link. So it meant that if I wanted design portfolio to go to my portfolio site, and then I wanted this card to go to my YouTube site, because it was using the central component, I couldn't have an individual link and I don't know if that's because of my lack of education or there's a bug on framer sites but I found this was the easiest way of getting around this as well as it was just nice um, to have this flexibility when creating the cards but this is the way I created them I literally had a row of three items inside and then you can adjust the padding and background colors on the right hand panel here and the border and the whole idea when it comes to your icons, add an image, but make sure you have a cohesive icon set. So I made sure that all of my icons were fit in 72 by 72 to make them more uniform. So next up is the last bit of the website. So the last part of the website is Really, I wanted to detail some feedback of what everyone that watches the channel like yourself has said. So really showcasing some testimonials to make people really understand what my content's all about and it's a nice reminder of when you get this positive feedback to like read this and showcase people uh, how you've really helped others out and it's very similar to the ticker component because if you go onto the main website here I've just got this scrolling by itself instead of having a carousel. I thought it was a nice effect to grab people's attention with a bit of movement and they can slow down and read some of the comments that some people have made. And it's just a nice way to really appreciate this. So the way I made these is like the ticker component, we can scroll down and we have an individual card. And inside the individual card, you basically duplicate these many times to how many cards you want to display. And we can see this is a testimonial card and this is actually a centralized component because they're pretty static and I wanted them to all have a uniform look. So when you double click these, you can see that this is a centralized component. I had two different styles, one with the company name and one with the company and position name here. And it means that if I just change this, say for example, to purple, and then you go back, the rest of these are all now purple, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to command Z that but that's a big advantage of using those components and they're very easy to do and create. So at the bottom, I had a big CTA called book some mentoring with me because I offer mentoring on my super peer site to help others land jobs in tech and really just give them that support. And I wanted to make that clear. So we've got a really big CTA here and it's very much just using the button component in frame sites and you can really just adjust this depending on the size and of the screen here. So that is very simple to do. And then the last bit is the footer. And this is something that inside Framer Sites, you can go into the insert and there's actually some navigation elements that they have for you to use. And you can just use one of their footers for example, I used this one at the bottom and I adjusted this, but then you can also see with the form here to make sure people can sign up to my newsletter dynamically. I use this review one, but I actually use ConvertKit, but it's something hopefully they can integrate in the future as well. So the idea with this one is if you go to the layers, we go back to our layers here and you click on the left, you can see it's a review component that they've made. And then on the right, you can actually set your review account up and it connects it all by itself. And 
The last bit of this footer component is pretty simple. Again, this was actually made as a stack and then we have some space in at the top and bottom here. And we've got also all of our icons as individual links at the bottom. So this was actually a component that I got basically from the assets panel and from the insert and the navigation and footer. And maybe you could use this as well. You can see it's very similar. So it's something you can just drag and drop in and use yourself. So that is the main part of really building the site. Hopefully you can support and purchase a template and save yourself a lot of time as well or book some mentoring and i might be able to help you out as well if that's what you're interested in the last thing to really mention is how to go about publishing your website so it's really simple you go on the top right and you can go to the publish and you get two domains so you get a dot framer app dot domain and you can add your custom domain but they do make you pay with framer sites similarly with other tools like webflow and the way you can manage this is you hit in the settings toggle and you can go straight to domains and then from here you can actually add a custom domain so it's really simple to do and you can also rename this as well and below you can see all the domain settings as well and a really nice thing is you can get all your version controls up here and some analytics to see how many people have been using your website as well which is all built in and you can actually also add google analytics to your website if you choose to but right now i'm keeping it pretty simple with these embedded domains but you have to upgrade from a basic plan to use custom domains and that is £12 a month right now which I think is okay um, definitely it is as cheap as just doing it all yourself by coding it but it's in line with Webflow solutions as well so that is how you go about publishing updates and updating your website Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you want to save yourself a ton of time and build your template and release your website within minutes, just purchase the template and support me as a creator. It'll go a long way and I'll really appreciate it. And the link is in the description below. Comment down below what you've learned about Framer sites. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for future Desire videos. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.